Good afternoon, B people. We're here in the workshop and we want to take a few minutes and answer a very common question that I get from, from new beekeepers or beekeepers that are trying to get into the hobby of beekeeping. You know, the question about where do you get bees from is the m number one most common question that I get from new beekeepers. The second question that I get is what equipment do I need? You could go online and search for beekeeping equipment um, Amazon or various other websites like Man Lake, uh, Blue Sky, or various other places, and you could see a lot of bee equipment. You could see a lot of bee equipment offerings. Um, here at the Bohemian Apiary, we found that trying to take something that seems complicated, or maybe is complicated to some, and try to simplify it the best we know how, which is to show you what we think here at the Bohemian Apiary a new beekeeper needs to get started. Beekeeping is one of those interesting hobbies to where you just can't buy a few things and be content with managing your bees with those few things. It does require a little bit of planning. It does require a lot of research um, to make sure you understand what you're getting into. Beekeeping is a hobby that uh, consumes you. Uh, my entire barn uh, is about 50% filled with pieces from beekeeping. Uh, that's because I've chosen to make it that. It could be that much equipment or it could be less. Um, it really depends on you. You could run one or two or a few colonies, um, or you could run 30, 40, 50, or 100 colonies or more. It really depends on the beekeeper and how much they want to get involved. A lot of aspects of beekeeping that I teach in my classes um, from the anatomy and the, the democracy to, of the beekeeping um, practice, the craft of beekeeping, all the way through equipment and things that you may need. In this video, I'm going to talk you through what I define as the Bohemia Bee Setup. This is the setup that I would offer to most beekeepers that are looking to get involved with bees, and it's a little different than you would see online. Um, I can put a link in the comments below, the information on how you can contact me to get this setup. Um, but there's a reason why I select the components in this setup for the new beekeeper. Um, so let's start. We're going to build this colony from the bottom up. And we've done this in another video when we installed a package, but you may have not been able to hear all the reasons why we select the pieces that we are selected. So let's go ahead and dissect this colony and build it back up and build this hive so that you can see here at Bohemia Apiary how we build a hive for our colonies to stay in um, from the parts that we have and we sell. Let's get started. Okay. So let's start with our foundation. The first thing that a beehive needs is a strong foundation. Naturally, this is my table saw te uh, bench, but you would want to build a place to set the beehive on in your apiary. That, that stand could be made of lumber, it could be made of cinder blocks, it could be a pallet, uh, something to keep it off the ground so that if there's uh, any flooding or water that potentially could flood and it does not get inside the colony. It also needs to be sturdy and sound because as these colonies build and are filled with honey, they can get very heavy. So you want something that's strong enough to support the weight of the colony. Um, so build a good foundation. That's always a smart thing to do. I'm not gonna get into how you do that, uh, ways to do that, I just mentioned a few. What I'm gonna talk about is the hive itself. Um, this hive that we're building is the uh, a Langstroth style hive. That is a common style hive, a box hive that beekeepers use. There are other styles. There are top bar hives, there's cathedral hives, there's also other types of uh, unique, cre uniquely created hive, uh, hives. We're gonna be testing another style hive here in another few weeks from a, um, from a, a friend of ours that builds a, a unique way of approaching beehives and we'll do a video on that. But let's focus on the standard Langstroth hive. The hives that you see online that people sell you and, and explain why we use the parts we use uh, in the apiary. Let's start with the base. The base is going to be your, your bottom board. 
This bottom board is actually a screen bottom board. You can see that it has a screen opening that allows um, for several reasons. Uh, let's talk about those reasons. Uh, screen bottom boards were designed for something called integrated pest management. Integrated pest management are a way to manage your colonies as part of their daily routine, uh, which is bees will groom themselves of the varroa mite uh, if they're attached to them, uh, they'll groom their, their, their other counterparts in the colony, and that mite will fall off the bee. In a screen bottom board setup, the mites will fall through the screen and land either on the ground below the hive or on the board that you've slid in the back. This is a burrow mite board. This is just a piece of corrugated plastic that it fits in, and it comes with this bottom board that we partner with Be Smart to create. I've done videos on the Beast of Iron Equipment, so I'm not gonna highlight Be Smart as a product brand, but why we put it together with our colonies is important. Because of the screen bottom board, it's solid construction, uh, easy to maintain, it won't rot away as wood will. Um, you can use a solid bottom board if you choose. Uh, I don't have any preference as to why you choose what you choose. I just prefer the integrated pest management screen bottom board, and I use these screen bottom boards year round. Um, the, the tray that sits underneath can be half open during the winter to allow for some airflow as well, uh, or it can be pushed in all the way if you're trying to count the number of mites that drop off of your bees. Uh, naturally, you would want to spray this board with a little bit of tackiness or oil or a pan, something that can protect, you know, have the, the mites attached to it so you can count it properly. But we're not going to talk about that today. The bottom board is structurally sound. It comes with these small little pegs so that when you put the next piece on, you can center it up very quickly. The next piece that comes in our kit and that I recommend for all colonies is the slatted rack. The slatted rack is basically a, uh, this is, fits a 10 frame colony and it has slats that go through about a quarter, three quarters of the way and then there's a small plate in the front. This is set so that it fits right on the pegs, okay? And it's beveled down, and this particular one, it makes no difference if it's square, slats, but these slats line up with the 10 frames, over the 10 frames in the colony. The point of a slatted rack, for those that may not know, is that in a bee colony, one of the things that creates swarming issues is congestion. Congestion in and out around the frames of the brood's nest where the queen is laying, where her pheromones cannot proliferate through the entire colony. When the worker bees are coming back and they're trying to get up to the super, uh, and if you don't have a top entrance, or maybe you do, and they're still coming in the front, and they go through the brood's nest in order to actually get to the honey super, um, or store the honey or pollen in the deep box or the box where the brood's nest is. They have to go through the frames to get to where they need to go to. The more bees, the more congestion, the less likely that the pheromones are being proliferated through the hive, so the, then the hive determines as a colony that they might need to split naturally, which is they start to create swarm cells in order to do that to swarm out and split. So the slatted rack is a technique that we use here to help mitigate swarming. It doesn't stop it. I've had swarms happen with slatted racks, but it helps mitigate it a little bit longer. And how does it help? It allows a place for the workers at night and when they're not foraging to, to hang out, a place for them to kind of just be without actually being up in the frames of the colony. It also keeps it dark lower so that your screen bottom board that you're using doesn't allow light up in the bottom of the frames and prevent the queen from laying all the way down the frames. She will lay lower on the frames because it's darker because the frames are being blocked by this panel in the front of the light coming in the hive. Does that make sense? So that's our slide rack. Once you have your slide rack in place, you're gonna put your deep box or medium, depending on what you choose, but this kit comes with a deep. It's a 10 frame deep box with handles all the way around. We don't assemble our kits. Our kits come unassembled. We can assemble them for you for a small fee, but these are also glued and nailed. Um, in this instance, how I built it, I recommend you do the same thing if you don't want to screw it. Um, the 10 frame box is the traditional brood's nest that we use. Uh, the deep box is what we use. Um, it comes with 10 frames with your kit. The bottom brood's nest box come with 10 deep frames with plastic, black plastic foundation that's heavy waxed. You can see the heavy waxing that's on it. 
This gives the bees a better chance of drawing out the comb cleaner instead of all the crazy comb that they may build out on these actual frames. Not saying your bees won't still build crazy comb, but they're less likely if you have a triple waxed frame. So all our frames are triple waxed. And on black foundation in the deep brood box, because when you're inspecting your colony, if you can't locate your queen, seeing that there are one day old eggs or two day old eggs in your colony and a lot of them in the cell, a single egg in the bottom can indicate you have a laying queen. So we don't necessarily need to inspect every single frame unless we're concerned about swarm cells or trying to understand or identify our queen or actually look at bee volume, which I can talk about in a second. But this particular frame allows us to quickly look at it and in the sunlight see very quickly the eggs that are in the cells. I'm gonna pause for a moment because we build these colonies out with this type of equipment and we manage our colonies to a couple factors. The first factor is bee volume. You need to make sure you have 50% or greater bee volume on a frame and for that frame to be necessary. Unless it's a frame full of pollen or full of capped honey. If you have outside frames that are full of pollen or full of capped honey, it's not necessary to have uh, you know, a full frame or more than 50% of bees. It's nice because then they're maintaining it and preventing other um, small hive beetles or wax moths from infiltrating their colony and eating the honey or eating the pollen in the frames and digging holes in the wax. But it's not necessary. When you manage your colony and you install a nucleus, you're gonna have five frames and you should put that five frames in the center of your box, maybe checkerboarding or putting another new frame in between those five frames and maybe leaving out the outside frames until they start to build out, okay? Um, if they've got enough bees where they're at 50% coverage on these inner frames, these five frames, then maybe you add two more, okay? And then once they are the same, when they have 50% or more bee coverage on these frames, then these eight frames, you're gonna add the two more on the outside. When they're at 50% more bee coverage on these inner frames, and maybe not the outside frame, maybe the, the, the eight frames, then you're gonna add a box, okay? So with our kit, we give you the bottom board from Be Smart with the integrated pest management screen bottom board, the deep box unassembled, unpainted, 10 frames with black foundation, deep frames, triple wax coated. We also then give you the next piece, which is a queen excluder. Some people use them, some people don't, but we do include it. We don't like for our queen, especially in a new colony, where there may not be uh, wax foundation or wax comb built out very heavily on the frames yet, and they're kind of building on all frames. Uh, if you've got a strong colony, they're, they're gonna wanna move up. And that brood's nest that may be down here may shift up to be bigger and wider, more like an oval, and will go into your, your colony where you have honey. And if you choose to have that, that's your call. But I would recommend leveraging a, screen, uh, a queen excluder when you can. All of our queen excluders are wood bound queen excluders and metal. Um, you place that on the colony before you put the next piece. The next piece is the medium super. Again, it's a medium box, unassembled and unpainted. This medium box is for honey. In a medium super, we do give you 10 frames with white foundation, heavily waxed, triple wax. This is where they would store the honey. If it was my recommendation, I would actually take out one of the frames and use nine equally spaced in the top of the honey super, giving a slightly more larger gap between the frames, as you see here, so that when they build out the wax, they build it out for the first time so that it goes slightly past the edge of the frame. This way, you may have one less frame of honey being built out, but you have deeper comb that when you cut it and you pull it out and cut the surface of the cappings off, it's cleaner for then you don't have low spots that may go into the actual comb. It's a good practice. Again, I wouldn't add a honey super until you were bursting at the seams and eight frames of 50% more bee coverage. Then put your queen excluder on, put your medium super, and allow those bees to actually work their way up and start to build out. Bees don't start to build comb until day 12. They have to be a 12-year-old bee or 12-day-old bee 
excuse me, uh, before they start to build comb. So if you have a lot of young bees in your colony or a lot of old bees in your colony, the chances of building comb may take a little bit longer. That's why packages tend to be a little bit harder to build out than a nucleus colony that you purchase. If you buy a package, a lot of those bees are older bees, more foraging bees, um, and they'll take on the job of building comb if you don't have drawn comb for them, if it's an empty hive like this. A lot of new beekeepers who get this, who buy a package, scratch their head and say, well, my bees don't seem to be, you know, it's been there for a month and they only have one or two frames that they're working on. There's ways to mitigate that to help try to get them to work on other frames by checkerboarding and such. But because there's not a lot of drawn comb, it's gonna be very difficult for that colony to build enough comb to just have a space to build the resources they need and the brood that they need to be adding a honey super already. If you were a brand new package, this honey super would not need to go on. If you want to feed, you could do that. We sell feeding inner covers. You can get an, a frame out and put a frame feeder in. You could get an inner cover that has a hole, put a mason jar upside down, and then take your honey super box without the frames and put it over top of it to hide it. So you can put a mason jar right in there. Okay? And you can feed in, internally. You don't want the bees to come up inside the cavity where the mason jar is. You want it to poke into a hole that faces down. So we have our colony now, and I want to show you one piece that you don't typically get with the kits online. But here at the Bohemian Apiary, I've done many videos about, I've talked about numerous times, and that's the screen inner cover. When you're starting out, putting a screen inner cover on top of the hive and then your lid on top, which we'll show you in a minute, is probably one of the best things you can do to be able to monitor your bees with less invasiveness. It gives the airflow that it needs to help cool the brood nest in the heat of the summer, but it allows you to be able to inspect the colony very quickly by lifting the lid and peeking under and seeing the volume of bees on what specific frame. It lets you know that very quickly without disturbing the nest, without inspecting the colony. I can tell you that. It also gives you an upper entrance if you want an additional upper entrance, but you could also flip that around and close it off and put your lid. Um, it's completely up to you. This is the standard setup. Deep, bottom board, deep, 10 frames with triple wax black foundation, queen excluder. Medium, 10 frames, white foundation, triple wax. Screen inner cover and your B Smart lid. These B Smart lids also are very helpful because they are easy to wash. They don't rot. They don't mold and mildew. They have a nice drip rail to keep the water off the side of the hive instead of dripping straight down the hive as a telescoping cover would going straight down. It also allows for it to be cooler in the winter are cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter because of the way the, the, the comb, the way the, the, the cavity of this is built. We really like these lids a lot. We take a paver brick, a standard six by uh, eight paver brick that's two inches thick, it's heavy enough to put on the top or a castle rock paver brick, and put it on the top of this. It won't depress the cover in, but it'll hold it in place. We've had hurricanes come through, we've had windstorms come through, and all of my beehives never need to be strapped down. I'm not saying not to strap your beehives down, that's completely your call, but I've never had to do it with these covers. Also allows you to walk along, take a quick peek, look where the bee volume is, understand what you need to do with that screen inner cover. There's a few pieces that come with the <coughs> bee, board, bee Smart board that naturally um, also come with your kit. The standard reducers that come with the kit it has two different sides. It has a mouse guard side and a closed side. You can determine which way you want to press these in. You could have it closed. You could have it as a mouse guard, or you could have it completely open and removed. Depending on the traffic of bees, depending on what you need it for, depending on if it's winter, um, you completely can control how you want those bees to come and go. My personal preference is to leave the mouse guard on Pretty much most of the year, with the exception of uh, a dearth, and during a nectar flow, pulling the middle one or pulling all of them off 
to allow for quick access. Um, but if you have a honey super and you have that upper entrance, that's also a good access point for the bees coming and going, the foragers bringing in honey for the honey super as well. That way they don't have to cross to the brood's nest with that upper entrance. One of the other things that comes with the kit is you get a robbing screen. During the dirt, bees like to, and yellow jackets and other things, like to get into colonies that, uh, that have honey. So with the Bee Smart products, they design a robbing screen as well. And that robbing screen allows you to pin a robbing screen on. Like such. The evening, after the sun is going down and the bees are in the colony, you put four pins in to hold it in place. Okay? And then you open up these doors up top. And the bees in the colony will come up and go in and out through these tops, while bees that are not welcome, that are trying to rob it out, or hornets, will stop because they can smell the entrance and they continuously try to come in this front, but they will not know how to come into that top. And that's a way to uh, prevent robbing on your colonies. Um, naturally, you would want to do something with your upper entrance as well, so that they don't come in there, whether you flip the screen around and close that off. It's completely your call. During a dearth, you don't need to get to the nestle uh, bringing honey in. During a dearth, there's no honey being brought in, so you can flip that screen around up top. Again, all the products you see here come with your kit here at the Bohemian Apiary. I believe that this is the starter kit, not because of the, the things that you think you need as a beekeeper, um, but the things that you do need based on my experience and my testing to start a bee colony in your backyard. The kits, uh, I'll list the price online, I'll list the link to more information online. You can private message me and ask me how much and how you could get yours if you need to be shipped to you or whatever, or if you're local to me, you can pick it up. But I have these kits available uh, for those that would wanna use them. Um, please support the Bohemian Apiary, support our, our channel, support the information that we share about the bees that we learn all the time. We are in no way an expert about bees, but we learn every day from the bees and don't claim to be the expert on everything. Everybody has a different way of doing it. So I recommend you learn your way. This is just what I would give to a new beekeeper if they're trying to build out their colonies and explain to them how to use it and why to use it in the steps that I just showed you. I hope that was informative. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok. Bohemian Apiary is everywhere socially um, as well as we continue to share everything we've learned about the bees because here at the Bohemian Apiary, uh, beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day.